we talk about what we call our three cornerstones of teaching, good teaching, excellent teaching, one of the key ideas is student engagement. And we do this with active learning, but there's an essence of this that is more than just having students do something. It's getting them involved in an activity where they're engaged, they're excited, maybe they're emotionally invested in what they're doing. These guys wrote a book called Made to Stick. And these are some of the core principles that they came up with. So we'll start with simple. How do you distill your idea down to its essence? So this is um, CPR. Everybody's familiar with CPR. I could hand out these sorts of instructions. What do you need to know to do CPR? Could I distill this down into something far simpler? <laughs> right? This is the core message. You need to get somebody else to help you. Call, then try, and keep going. Right? The point is that simple messages can be engaged with more easily than complex messages. Okay. Unexpected. Which I think this is kind of in this idea of cognitive dissonance. That you're presenting something that the students really think, whoa, I never thought about that. You open up a knowledge gap in your field. So in this case, do we know for sure that there's a relationship between sugar and hyperactivity? This is an assumption that we have, but maybe you present it in a way that says, well, wait a second. Is this real or not? And suddenly, it becomes real for them. It's, it asks, requires them to ask a question. Suddenly, they're engaged. Concrete. How do you make activities that engage students directly, that they get to experience something, that they use their senses? There's a famous story about a classroom in, I think it was Iowa, right after Martin Luther King Jr. was shot. And this teacher was trying to make that experience relevant to a class of all white kids. And she was having a hard time doing it. So she segregated the class, blue eyes and brown eyes. And she told everybody that the brown eyed kids had an advantage. They were smarter. And sure enough, within a few days, you saw distinct differences in student learning and engagement in the brown eyed kids versus the blue eyed kids. And then she came in and she said, I made a mistake. It was the blue-eyed kids who had the advantage, not the browns. So that's making an experience concrete. But you also need to make it credible, right? Rather than you telling students, yeah, this is the real thing. This is what happens. They actually get to experience it. So one of the classic uh, examples is the price of tap water versus bottled water. And so I could sit up in, in some sort of environmental class or conservation class, and I could say, the price is about 150 times different. And then I go on to the next slide. Well, 150 times different might be something that's tangible for them, but it might not be. And so in this case, I might say, how much for a gallon of gas these days? I paid 335 this morning. If I were to buy a gallon of water, bottled water in the same way, it would have been over $6 a gallon. No, no kidding. So suddenly now you've provided the same information, but you've done it in a little different way that hopefully makes it more real and more credible for people that there is a really distinct difference. So a credible idea makes you believe that this is true, and we have lots of facts that we believe in. But if you make it something that ties into someone's values, you make it an emotional idea and suddenly people care about it. You're trying to teach them new information. They have no way to associate this with anything. You get to help them see how this information relates to something that they already care about and help them to start caring about it as well. And you can do this by simply asking students throughout your course or at the beginning of the course, what things do you value? 
Why are you in this class? What do you expect? Tell stories. Build your content into stories. Build your assignments around stories. Build your projects around stories. And I try to tell stories that weave in all the different parts of what I'm going to cover in the course. But I don't really tell them that until the next day of class that they come in. And then we go through and talk through these different topics that we're going to talk about. But throughout the course of the semester, I always come back to those stories that I told at the beginning. I say, yeah, can you remember that guy that we talked about? This is what, this is where that content is important.